What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, today we are here in front of my 2016 Honda Accord Coupe V6 six-speed manual, and regular viewers of the channel will recognize this car. I've made many videos on it, in addition to the two previous 9th Gen Accords I've owned before this one. And I have, like I just mentioned, I have owned these 9th Gen Accords for the past eight years, specifically about six on these facelift ones. I owned, of course, this one. I've owned this one for the past three years, and then I had a 2017 before that for the four years preceding that. So I'm very familiar with these cars. I absolutely love them, except for one thing. And that one thing is the infotainment system. So anyone who's familiar with these EX and up, Nice Gen Accords with the uh, factory touchscreen CarPlay radio will know exactly what I'm talking about. This, uh, the radio in these cars is unreliable to say the least. I'm actually gonna hop in the car for the rest of this because I don't wanna deal with that beeping. But anyway, most people who own these cars are familiar with how crappy the CarPlay system is in this car. And the touchscreen, I mean, this works well when it works, but the problem is it never really does. And the reason for that is, well, I guess I should really explain the issue first. Basically what happens with these head units is when you're in CarPlay, like I am here, and you're playing music, navigating using Google Maps, uh, after 20 or 30 minutes, it, there really is no rhyme or reason to it, but these radios are really known for uh, crashing, freezing, hanging up. I've explained it many times in previous videos I've made on this car, and there really hasn't been a software fix for it. And I have always had a hunch owning these cars after a while based on the circumstances in which it crashes and how it crashes, that I think the problem with these radios, aside from the antiquated hardware, which we'll get to in a minute, I think the primary cause for this is it's running out of RAM. And I will go ahead and back out of CarPlay so we can take a look at the hardware on this radio real quick. If I go, let's see, I actually don't, oh, okay, never mind. I actually don't have CPU-Z on this one, but interesting. Anyway, I will put up a picture in this video, actually, because I did take one. Uh, essentially, what these radios are is this is a touchscreen radio, but it runs a highly modified version of Android. I don't know if you'll be able to tell if I pull down the notification screen, you can see that uh, this is Android. It's actually Android 4.2.2, I believe, Jelly Bean. Um, and so the hardware inside this radio is essentially from about 2012. It has a very car-specific SOC, and it's, pr it's on the low end for sure, and it only has one gigabyte of system memory. And I think that when they put CarPlay in these cars, you know, it wasn't really up to snuff uh, hardware-wise to fully support that reliably. And so that's the reason CarPlay is so buggy and crappy in these cars. So I've always had a hunch that it, the RAM has been the issue. So what I decided to do is I actually sent a second unit that I purchased on eBay a few weeks ago over to my buddy Colin, aka DOS Dude one here on YouTube, and I had him attempt to upgrade the RAM on the board of this radio. So, as of right now, he has a 45 minute video detailing the process, which you can go check out. I will link it in the description. But he actually <clears throat> carried out that upgrade and essentially he had to basically reverse engineer many parts of the radio to get it get it done. It wasn't as simple as just soldering new RAM chips onto the logic board. So there was a lot of like software and hardware modifications he had to make in addition to doing that to get it to work. But he was able to complete the upgrade and he is sending the radio back to me. It should be here tomorrow. And it was kind of an expensive proposition to do this, but the actual premise of the upgrade has been completed. Now we just need to see if it's gonna fix the problem. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uninstall this one, reinstall that one in the car. I will film it because I think that's relevant information. These aren't that hard to remove from the vehicle. So we're gonna put that in and I will also go over how to install Honda Hack, which is gonna be necessary uh, for us to look at the hardware with CPU-Z, which I'm not, I don't remember if I did not install it on this one or I'm not really sure what's going on. But Honda Hack is essentially a piece of software that allows you to uh, get around a lot of the <laughs> crappy uh, crashing and lagging and stuff like that. And it allows you to do a lot of other like custom things with this head unit. Uh, and it also gives you root access and it allows you to install applications, which is what this is here right here for. So 
I'm going to be redoing that. He actually had to wipe the firmware on the upgraded radio that he modified uh, for reasons that you'll find out in his video if you go watch it. So it doesn't have Honda hack on it. So we're going to put that back in here. I'm going to reinstall uh, the system root and the Honda hack application. And then we're going to take a look at CPU Z if I can get it back on here. We'll see what it says. He's not 100% sure if it's going to show up in that, but it, it should because the system is recognizing the memory. So anyway, that's how that's going to go. We're going to put it in and then I'm going to see over the course of a few weeks or so of testing if it actually fixes the issue. And if it does, I will update this. I will put a second clip on the end of this video saying such. So that's how it is. Uh, that's pretty much all I can say for right now. And I will go ahead and catch you guys tomorrow when I get the radio and we'll put it in. All right, we're back. And the radio that has been upgraded by my good friend Colin is back. So here it is. So now we are just going to go ahead and slap it in the car, obviously. Um, while I was doing this project, I also decided that I wanted the JDM hazard switch, so we got that installed. And that's a small thing, but nevertheless, there it is. It looks kind of neat, and it does light up at night, which is cool. But uh, other than that, we are going to start by taking the dashboard apart again, and we're going to uh, remove that radio and install the other one. So this is not as hard as it looks. I'm not a tutorial kind of guy, so I think I'm just going to do a time lapse of doing this, but essentially a lot of this stuff is just clipped in and there are some screws involved. Um, but to sum it up quickly, you know, these side panels have to come off. They're just clipped on and then this uh, cubby thing has to come off and there are a couple of bolts underneath down in the dash that hold the radio on. Uh, that's probably the whole hardest part of this whole project. And then as far as stuff on top, all that we need to do is remove this panel here. This just pops off. It, you'll see in the time lapse, it's easy. And this also needs to come off as well, which also is just held in with clips. And then of course there's like a million different uh, electrical connectors on the back of the radio, but I'm essentially just gonna set up the camera and do that uh, in a time lapse. And I'll pick back up with you guys after that. So the radio has been reinstalled. I'm going to leave everything kind of taken apart until we verify functionality. But next I'm just going to turn the ignition of the car on and we'll see if it works. All right, so next what we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing the Honda Hack system root application again. And uh, hopefully it's not going to break the system. <laughs> so we'll see. But I'm not going to provide instructions for this. If you want to go ahead and purchase Honda Hack, I think there actually is a free version as well. You can go to autohack.org and there are instructions and everything on there. So I'm just going to go ahead and go through and try and reinstate the route and we will go from there. All right, so it seems it has been installed successfully. Let's go ahead and make sure. Oh, it's gonna open by itself, sweet. This is an Accord. Continue. Now it's gonna optimize settings and we can use this to reinstall CPU-Z. So now we're gonna turn the car off and we'll restart it. All right, well, my buddy Jack has decided to join us. But uh, <laughs> so I'm going to show you guys. I finally got uh, Honda Hack, which is the root software, Google Chrome, and CPU Z back on this thing. So if we fire up CPU Z here, first of all, I want to mention that even just messing around in the UI, this thing is so much faster than it was before. So there's that. But if we go over here to the system here, you can see that we now have two gigabytes of RAM, or, you know, 1895 available. But 
that is way better than it used to be. And like I mentioned, even just messing around in the UI, it is so much faster and more responsive. So the only thing left now is to just hook my phone up to it via CarPlay and then go drive it for an hour or two. And then I'll have to see if the issue's been resolved. But I'm probably going to give it a little bit longer than that just to make really sure. But there's going to be one more clip uh, at the end of this video letting you know the results. But based on what I'm seeing so far, I am very optimistic. So I'll catch you guys back up later. All right, so uh, after some driving and some hours of testing, I have some results. I have some good news, and unfortunately I also have some bad news, but we'll get to the good news first. The good news is, is that this radio is definitely running smoother than it was before, for sure. Even just scrolling about the CarPlay UI, everything is so much smoother. I mean, you can see the frame rate comparison. Uh, in comparison to the start of this video, everything just runs so much smoother scrolling through CarPlay and also even the built-in Android UI is just so much snappier and smoother no matter what you do. I mean even just scrolling through this is all so much more responsive than it used to be. So that's the good news. Unfortunately the bad news is is that it still does crash and restart. Um, I can't really say if it's less often than it was before because really the problem is related to navigation apps. If I'm just playing music in Spotify like this, I can drive this from here to Florida and it will probably won't crash. But the minute I load up Google Maps, is uh, that's bad news. So like I mentioned in my update video, it's a little bit better now because with iOS 18 on the iPhone, the radio just kind of respring's and then CarPlay starts right back up and it starts working again. Um, but Unfortunately, the problem has not been resolved, which means that the issue with the CarPlay crashing has to do with something else going on, either a software problem or it might even be iPhone related, I don't know. But so while this project was somewhat of a success, there was some positive benefits observed with it. I mean, even in, even when the map app is up and it is working, the frame rate is so much higher than it used to be. I mean, this, this, all of this used to run at like 15 frames per second, but now it's pretty smooth and uh, there is an improvement to be observed there. But unfortunately, the crashing issue has not been resolved by this project. So I knew that was a risk when I wanted to do this. I, you know, there was no guarantee that it was going to fix it, but I had been thinking about this for years and I really wanted to know. And like I mentioned, we did see some improvement, so I guess it wasn't for nothing. Something I have noticed though is on my top screen up here, normally there's a compass right here in this area on this like multi-view screen, but for some reason it is no longer available. It's not even an option in there anymore. And I really don't know why that is because I, I mean, I guess I could figure that the lower trim Accords did not have a built-in compass like this one does, but I talked to my buddy who works at the Honda dealership. He was telling me that these touchscreen radios that come in the EX and higher trim levels in these 9th gen Accords are all the exact same part. The hardware is the same, and so is the software. It basically just it chooses what to display up here based on the inputs it receives from the car. So I really don't know why that is occurring, but uh, thankfully, the compass is really not something that I need or care about. I happen to have a phone and an Apple Watch tied to me pretty much all the time, so I can look at that if I want to know where I'm going. But besides that, it's just really not... Uh, I can't really explain why that's occurring. But like I mentioned, it's not a big deal, and it's, uh, it's okay. So with that said, that is going to be the conclusion to this project. It cost me a lot of money and, you know, time on my friend's parts to help me get it done. So... Was it worth it? I can't really say for certain that it was, but hey, at least we did observe some improvement at least. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching and coming along for this project, and I'll see y'all in the next video.